From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. A woman shoots two men in Billings. We'll tell you why she isn't facing any charges. The actual legal term is justifiable use of force. Plus, a favorite Billings restaurant is reopening soon. Well, this is our first opportunity with running water, and back to normal we go. And despite a scary cancer diagnosis, one Laurel firefighter continues paying it forward. Good morning and welcome to Fontana this morning on this Tuesday, January 31st. We begin right here, 15 miles south of Billings, where a shooting sent two people to the hospital and lands a suspect in custody. This around 430 yesterday afternoon, Yellowstone County deputies in the BIA responded to a 911 call in Cormier Road near the Crow Reservation. That's where they found the first victim injured by gunfire. Another injured victim was discovered a few minutes later. Again, a suspect was detained. Authorities plan to release more information later today, but they did say there's no current threat to the public. Meanwhile, police are now calling a weekend shooting in Billings self-defense. Officers say on Saturday night, a 25-year-old woman shot two men trying to rob her in an alley near West High. The would-be robbers were taken to the hospital for treatment. The woman had a concealed carry firearm and did not know the men who attacked her. Lawyers say self-defense laws in Montana are pretty cut and dry. People think of uh, self-defense or things like that. The actual legal term is justifiable use of force. The law allows you to defend yourself with the same force that they are coming with, essentially. Police tell us the case will be reviewed by the county attorney's office, which is standard practice for self-defense cases like this one. We'll continue following that. And a homicide investigation is underway following the suspicious death of a Montana state prison inmate. 49-year-old Todd Fisher was found dead Sunday. He was serving a 70-year sentence for killing his father in Glendive back in 2019. The Montana Department of Corrections and area law enforcement are investigating, but they believe this was an isolated incident. Now we've got Miller Robson joining us. Sort of an interesting uh, day. One of our uh, viewing areas in yeah. Livingston. Viewers telling us they reported seeing an earthquake yesterday, or yep. feeling an earthquake yesterday. And come to find out, it's a 4.1 magnitude earthquake. Yeah, there you go. We got a little graphic here to show you. We'll zoom on in. It was still a minor earthquake, but it was uh, strong enough to register 4.1. It was about three miles deep, six miles northwest of Livingston yesterday afternoon. Basically, it felt like a really big truck <laughs> rolling by the house. It was it's a good way to describe so, it. So uh, no reports of injuries, so that's good news. And it's not uncommon here in Montana. We have several earthquakes a day, but they're very small. Uh, but this one actually registered, so uh, very interesting there. You know, we're along yeah, a, one of the world's lo uh, biggest volcanic systems, so mm -hmm. we're sitting on a volcano, basically, so it is unstable Truly. there. Uh, so You might yeah. be blocking that out. We're trying to block it out, true. yeah. Well, you don't wake up every morning going, hey, I live on top of Today's a volcano. The day. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> but that was just very interesting stuff there, and uh, thank goodness no injuries were yeah. reported. All right, let's talk. Let's crunch numbers as you take a live shot across Billing. Still very icy out there. I live uh, on the West End coming down Broadwater. Still some spots where it's very, very slick, so please be careful. Uh, yesterday, uh, we were uh, very, very cold. A uh, good 31 degrees below the norm. Uh, minus 8, well below average for this time of the year. Top gust yesterday of 40. Uh, it was dry yesterday. Uh, looks like we're going to wrap up the month a little bit in the hole on the moisture totals, but the snow totals still well below average. And there's no snow in the forecast for Billings for the rest of this week, maybe early next week. Uh, we may see some snow coming into our area. Nine right now at the airport feels like nine below. Winds out the southwest at about 17 miles an hour. It is cold, but we are getting warmer. We'll take a look at that and a whole lot more with the main forecast here in just a bit. Okay, Miller, thank you so much. We'll okay. check back in with him and a few. Other headlines this morning happening in less than a week. Local restaurant Cajun Fatties begins serving meals again after a burst pipe forced them to temporarily close. This morning, Q2's Jackie Coffin finds out how the owners are putting that place back together. Here at Cajun Fatties, they're making boudin balls. It's a tasty little Cajun staple that is pork, liver, rice, and spices rolled together and then deep fried. It's a returning menu item to Cajun Fatties that you'll be able to find once they reopen next week. Feel free to jump in, get in where you fit in. It's lunchtime and Cajun Fatties is busy, but not with the customers they've come to see as family. We can't cook, we can't serve anybody our food, we can't see our customers whose families we also know, children we also know, we love them. And so it's been 
hard. This is where a pipe burst in the back of their kitchen at the end of December, closing the Cajun restaurant's doors for six weeks. The restaurant is no stranger to floods. Back in June, staff spent several days in Carbon County serving up free food to flood victims. What they're not used to is dealing with the damage themselves. The wall had to be knocked out, everything had to be replaced. It damaged our equipment, it damaged our electrical, it damaged everything. The restaurant had to pull out all of its equipment to repair the damage. We just got back in Wednesday, so last Wednesday. So this is our first opportunity with running water and back to normal we go now, just clean up. Kitchen manager Ronnie Hagel says the silver lining of the forced closure, everyone was paid and kept their jobs and they had the opportunity to add to their menu. She did create some new menu items that we worked on um, over at her house. So we're going to try to try those out. A few examples, a special Valentine's Day event and tasting menu. And these boudin balls already being prepped for the restaurants come back with doors opening on February 6th. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. If you're looking for a place to go eat, they could use some love. And upgrades are coming to eastern Montana's electrical grid. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is investing $3 million in a project run by Weibo based Golden West Electric Cooperative. The utility will connect 65 new customers to the grid by building and improving more than 30 miles of line. Montana is one of 26 states benefiting from the installation of smart grid technology. This is an electricity network that uses digital and other advanced technologies to connect hard to reach rural areas. In the national news this morning, we do expect to hear from the family of Tyree Nichols and their lawyer at an event later today in Memphis. This comes after new fallout from the brutal police beating of 29-year-old father earlier this month. CBS's Jared Hill has more. The Memphis Police Department now says two more officers, one of them, Preston Hemphill, have been suspended pending an investigation. All of this following the beating of Tyree Nichols. This is Hemphill's body cam from the initial traffic stop. It shows him trying to tase Nichols before he runs away. Hemphill later said this. I hope they stomp his ass. Hemphill was not present at the second incident where five now fired officers beat Nichols. Those five are being charged with second degree murder. That was a gang of men attacking a 150 pound guy. The Memphis Fire Department also announced it has fired two paramedics and a lieutenant for not following policies and protocols. Video shows Nichols wasn't given medical attention for several crucial minutes. He died three days later. Everybody's walking around nonchalantly like it's business as usual. So it should be accountability for everybody on the video. Memphis police warned there could be more personnel actions in the coming days. And the district attorney's office has said that their investigation is ongoing and there could be more charges in the future. We're praying for the hurting people in the community. A prayer vigil was held last night in the neighborhood where the tragic incident happened. Friends of Nichols also gathered in his hometown of Sacramento. Now, Bishop, he was more than skateboarding. He was, he was somebody that was going to comfort you. A funeral service for Nichols will be held tomorrow. Jared Hill, CBS News, Memphis. At the funeral, civil rights activist Reverend Al Sharpton will deliver the eulogy. Next week, Nichols' family will attend the president's State of the Union address as guests of the Congressional Black Caucus. Other national headlines this morning, the White House is planning to end two COVID-19 emergency declarations in May. The original actions taken by the Trump administration provided funds and resources to several federal, federal agencies to help them deal with the pandemic. Ending these declarations will mean the government will begin treating the virus as an endemic that is here to stay. Happening tomorrow, President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy will sit down to discuss raising the nation's debt limit. The meeting comes after 22 GOP senators sent a letter to President Biden saying they intend to stand by their policy. Any debt ceiling raise must be matched by equal or greater spending cuts. Democrats say the Republicans have yet to say what kind of cuts they want or where those would come from. We'll be following that. Now back here in Montana, a story of perseverance. One Laurel firefighter isn't letting a cancer diagnosis define him. Instead, he's facing it head on, raising money for other patients, fighting his same battle. Q2's Casey Conlin has more. Captain Sean McCleary has called this volunteer fire department in Laurel home for the last 15 years. His routine is simple. When a call comes in, he goes. So nothing seemed out of the ordinary on September 2nd, 2021 until his wife got a call she never expected. His son calls me and says, we just called an ambulance for dad. And I said, who's dad? 
Carrie McCleary is used to emergency calls. Her husband has responded to hundreds of them. That morning, it was a vehicle fire. I left the house, said I'd be right back. But he wasn't. After his EMT son noticed there was something wrong with Sean on the drive. I keyed the mic and I didn't know what I was gonna say. On the third time when I keyed the mic, I started stuttering. By the time he got to the hospital and had an MRI taken, the diagnosis was clear. Sean had a large tumor on the back left part of his brain. Two days later, he was in surgery. I'm not really that emotional. I've never seen anything like that before, just on television, you know, and of course then I start crying because I'm scared. That was the longest five and a half hours of my life. When Sean did wake up, it was to good news. Neurosurgeon Vance Fredrickson was able to remove almost the entire tumor. The goal is always to get as much as you can safely, but you also have shorter survival if you cause major deficits. Deficits meaning basic motor functions, speech, sight. For the next year, Sean looked and felt great, and the Laurel community rallied behind him, holding a number of fundraisers to help with his recovery. But then the tumor started to grow back, and Dr. Fredrickson needed to go back in. And he goes, I want to do a little, go a little deeper if that's okay, but you're probably going to lose a little bit of your vision. And I said, I'm totally fine with that. Just get that out of my head. Once again, the outcome was extremely positive. The tumor is now shrinking. But life is much different now. I can't do nothing, you know. I can't hop in the truck and drive downtown to the fire station or the store. Yes, it's a happy ending right now, but this could be something that we have to deal with for the rest of his life. Two things have made a huge difference. One, he started going back to the fire department. He helps tell people what to do, what truck to take, who can go on what truck. Which brings us to number two. The McCleary's held a chili cook-off last month to raise money for fellow brain cancer patients. We had so many people helping us out, so that's what we want to do. And it's not like we're, you know, got a million dollars or anything to help, but we do what we can. For Sean, that's more and more every day. We're doing okay. I mean, I'm health-wise is, is a lot better. Mentally, I'm a lot better. I want to help others. In Laurel, Casey Conlon, MTN News.